Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, guys, that was my first sip, believe it or not. <laughs> I just come out and ensure, enjoy that with you. Listen to the birds just tweeting up a storm. I don't know if you can hear this. But boy, are they ever enjoying it. It is a absolutely gorgeous day. Not too hot. And we got some beautiful, beautiful sunshine. I'll tell you, I love living in Texas. You know, in Texas, I think you get like 330 days or something like that of sunshine a year. It is really wild when you think about it. Mm. Of course, that also means you don't get that much rain. So it can be a drought state from time to time. But lots of greenery around here. Guys, I'll tell you what, this week is going to be big. I really believe that. Now, a lot of stories are coming out right now, and I think we need to talk about a few of them. First one that I want to get right out there is, of course, we got the whole you know interest rate cut coming on Wednesday. Now, a lot of folks are out there, and there's a 50-50 split as to whether it's going to be a 50 uh, basis points drop or maybe a 25 basis points drop. And that's what they're thinking. But either way, guys, they are going to start cutting rates. At least that seems to be the consensus that's going on. And I really do believe that that is going to have some significant impacts in the way in which free and easy money starts rolling out. Absolutely. Now, maybe not immediately, but certainly I do believe that it's going to have an impact like that. And that is the whole name of the game. It's inflate, inflate, inflate. And then of course, you know, you're gonna see, hey, they're gonna start bringing in the tightening back again. But before that, guys, I think we're going to see something phenomenal happen in these markets, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Delicious. Now, I'll tell you one of the other big deals that is coming out right now, and I think it really needs to be addressed, is a lot of news articles are saying that the SEC has dropped this whole appeal when it comes to XRP. Now, I have not read, now I've seen, hey, Wall Street Bulls have posted stuff. You see all these news articles and things like that. But for me, guys, believe it or not, I am waiting until October the 7th when the whole time frame has finally ended. And I'll tell you what, if I see that they have not filed an appeal on this Ripple versus SEC case, and they're not going after XRP in the secondary markets to get that designation changed from it not being a security come October 7th, which really, we're not even that far away from that. Then guys, and only then, am I really gonna buy it? Because I'll tell you, we have had conjecture throw out there before and it seems like 90% that this is the way it is. And then boom, whole thing has turned back on its head and it wasn't what they said it was. Lots of that, I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. And there is absolutely zero shortage of speculation in this digital asset space, isn't there guys? I mean, is it really over or is it just being thought to be over? And I want it to be over, believe you me, I want it to be over and I certainly wanna believe that it's really over. But guys, we have been in this space, Judy and I, since before the lawsuit was even laid, way, way back there, like four plus years ago now. And I'll tell you what, we have seen a lot happen in this space, boy, I'll tell you, that would really just, people would never have seen it coming. Think about, for those of us who have been around a little bit, not that long ago, FTX, how many people genuinely saw that happening down the road? Now, after the fact, oh, lots of people, oh, I knew this was gonna happen. Well, if you knew it was gonna happen, then why weren't you out there saying, oh yeah, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna rug pull the whole industry, $8 billion worth of fraud, on and on and on. No guys, they weren't out saying that. And those that did know, nope, they weren't out saying anything about it. And in fact, if the SEC really knew because remember, Sam Bankman-Fried was in there with Gary Gensler, right, and all that. And if they had any inclination that it was going to go south the way that it did, and they didn't come out and tell the public and stuff like that, that, hey, there might be some, you know, issues going on and we're investigating, at least put out those notices and to warn the public, guys, they never did it. And that's where I always believe, look, they say that they're out there to protect you and I as a retail investor. Really, are they? Is their behavior showing that they're doing that? No, it isn't. In fact, mm -hmm. 
The whole lawsuit from day one was a dog and pony show and cost retail and the markets over $15 billion, guys. And the thing is this, a lot of people say, oh yeah, we should be able to go out and sue the SEC. Doesn't work like that. Government entities that are there to enforce program legislation and on and on, even if they're wrong, you can't go back and sue them for it regardless. Now, if I suppose you can prove male intent and stuff like that, but I guess, guys, come on. They have every defense in the book that they're going to throw out there that, oh, well, it wasn't malicious, regardless of the free passes for Ethereum and all and on. And, and we just know that's how it works. But it's the disingenuousness of it all. So in that capacity, yeah, no way am I ever going to really, you know, put all my cards on that until the absolute time has passed and we know for a fact that no appeal is gonna be filed. And in the broader economy, come on guys. I mean, look at what's going on around you. You and I, is, are you, is your life financially better off than it was just two years ago? For most people, you know what the consensus is? No, it's not. They have taken poll after poll after poll. And there are folks right now that are opting to live out of their vehicles with full-time paying jobs too. Why? Because the cost of the rent to have that place is way, 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 way more. And on top of that, the utilities are off the Richter scale. And think about this. As we know, when it comes to these inflation numbers, they don't even include food or power in it. Can you fathom that? I mean, some of the two biggest factors where inflation is seen on a real scale for the average Joe. Nope, or Jane, by the way. Nope, they don't want you to think about that. Oh, no, we're turning the economy around. Guys, I actually believe that more than likely become, come November in the whole selection deal, my guess is they'll have the rate down to right where they want it, that 2%. Won't that be a shocker? Oh, yeah, inflation's right down to that 2%, right where we were aiming for. See, we turned it around and on and on. Watch, mark my words, I, and put that one on the fridge. Hey, I'll eat crow if I'm wrong, but I believe that that's probably what's going to be coming down right about then i'll tell you what mm -hmm. and in all honesty for those of us that have lived through a number of these you know selection cycles does that surprise us guys i mean genuinely does that surprise you i don't think it surprises any of us i don't think much of what we're seeing today is surprise i think we've gotten so desensitized to all of this shock, shock stuff that they realize the powers be, uh, it's not working anymore. People aren't buying it anymore. They're not going down with this anymore. They're not believing all that we say anymore. We got to change tactics. Watch it. Watch and see what they do and how they do it. Because guys, it is amazing just how chameleon they can be and how quickly they can change their spots when they need to. And that's how I kind of look at it. So you got to be out there, boy, I'll tell you what, sharp as tax and not letting yourself get buffaloed by all this. Now, of course, all the day-to-day -day stuff comes in, right? You got your family, you got this, you got your kids, you got that, on and on and on. And boy, the distractions are out there in heaps but guys take time out just take a little time out and come out enjoy a coffee with me number one if you can and number two just exhale just get to not let it tie you up into all the knots and tie you down from absolutely enjoying the life that you got look a lot of us are out there we're living in all these various parts we got a lot of kids in california and california of course is beautiful boy on a financial and a political level wow 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 but needless to say out there work and work and working how many of you actually get down to the beach and really enjoy what's around you and take that time to exhale really think about that big time because mm -hmm. one thing i'll tell you right now is this space, this space for sure, this digital aspect will eat you alive if you allow it. I mean, you will constantly be consumed by looking at your phone, looking at the charts, looking at your portfolio, doing this, doing that, and on and on and on. And on and on, guys, don't live like that. Set it and forget. I used to love like Ron Popeil would come out this guy and he'd do these various infomercials. Well, he had this one rotisserie machine. And one of the slogans that he had was set it and forget it. And in a way, you actually need to take that advice. You set it and you forget it. And one day, bang, it's there, guys. Don't get yourself all focused on the little penny moves. Yes, take a macro view. Zoom out for sure. 
But when you've researched it for yourself and you've built up that confidence and you know what you're, you're getting involved with and stuff like that, and that's where it's coming from because guys, listen, on this channel, you're getting my 100% biased opinion. Make no bones about it. And in fact, we are in deep. Not like I heard, I think it was, uh, I'm going to say this, Crypto Hulk. I believe it was Crypto Hulk who came out and said that he only invested two paychecks into XRP. Now, can you fathom that? When a majority of his channel is all about XRP. Now that's, hey, he's coming out and he's telling you that's what he's doing. And I give him credit for at least being transparent that way. So we're trying to be as, as much as what's safe. Judy and I, I'll tell you, do we got some skin in this game. And so when I get out there and I share my points of view about XRP, yep, you're getting my 100% biased opinion. But like I always like to say, I can share my convictions with you, but I can't give you the confidence that goes with it. And this is where I come out and I say, guys, get out and research what's coming down the road. See how they are moving us into a big time digital economy. Now, having said that, I want to throw something out there about Greg Mamarino. And I really like Greg Mamarino because the guy has literally got his eyes wide open to be sure. One thing for certain is, and he promotes, and I absolutely agree, and he knows for a fact, is it's the debt market that is the beating heart of all this stuff. That is for certain. And you want to see what's coming down the pike? Just look at the debt market and what's going on. And guys, on top of that, recently I heard that he was saying, hey, listen, he just loaded up on some XRP himself and stuff like that. And he's come out in the past and said, hey, how he looks at, because why? He's looking down the road. And what he's seeing is, hey, they are literally ushering in a brand new digital economy. And one thing we know, real world asset tokenization. How many times have we talked about it on this channel? And of course, XRP so heavily involved in that. Brad Garlinghouse and David Swartz. Mm -hmm. Both came out and said in 2025, 2026, you're going to watch the XRP ledger and real world asset tokenization just take off. And in fact, Gregory Mamarino was coming out and he was talking just recently about the tokenization of everything. And I absolutely 100% agree. Guys, they are moving us into a new digital economy. So this is where I share and say, get out there and really research that. Go to these sites like the Bank of International Settlements, the International Monetary Fund, even the Federal Reserve, and read up on what they are saying and get yourself mentally prepared for what's coming down the road. And from there, guys, you're gonna start to be able to have confidence on your own accord. And yeah, YouTube's great for confluence where you might find agreement. And even in that case, you might find some disagreement. But needless to say, it's not research, guys. It's not research, I'll tell you what. Well, guys, I sure hope you're having an absolutely fabulous Monday. It is a beautiful one. And I pray that it, wherever you are in the wide world, you're having a beautiful one as well. Later on, we're gonna have the turning point today, I think around 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And maybe we might even get an evening video out as well. But guys, I'll tell you what, until then, I sure hope you're having a fabulous one and take care.